guys, today Anastasia, she's sleeping in my bed, knocked out. She redesigned with me her chameleon's cage. We had quite a good time. I should have filmed it, but I'll just give you a recap of what we did. So, most importantly, all of the items that she used to create her greenhouse for her chameleon were free. We've used old jars. We've used candle containers that are cleaned out. This is one of the containers that we use to breed the mealworm. So we've put more than one mealworm in here and we're going to allow the mealworms to breed and recreate on their own. She has her fighting fish in there, if you can see him. These plants are from the front of our building, so they were free. Um, you can see she's got a water bottle container, chocolate milk container, a tomato jar, Shout out to Dunkley's Donuts, a container for Dunkley's Donuts, and an icing container for cake. So everything she has used here, sorry, she's behind the door. Everything that she has chosen to use here, we pretty much just took from home. So I just want to be clear about that. And it looks quite cute. You know, you can, sorry, because I've got a little bit of design. We just did this today. You can redesign your chameleon's cage on a budget which is what i was initially talking to parents about when i said getting the chameleon is quite expensive but you don't he's a little angry right now because he's checking out his cage that's the colors um, um you don't have to overdo your budget uh fighting fish here was about ten dollars let me see if i can pull them out it's a tiny little jar see he was about ten dollars my daughter calls him bluey He's the second bluey we've had. <laughs> uh, well, these were free. They were from the front of the building. I do not suggest stealing other people's plants. We had permission before we took these from the front of our building. We asked, um, um, and they were more than willing to let them. They were quite excited that Anastasia had a pet reptile because she's only five, you know? So a lot of times people think that five-year-olds can't do it, but they actually can if you teach them. We if you're going to replant I strongly suggest that when you take the plant you do not pull it you cut at an angle so you see how my hand is at an angle you cut the stem at an angle and then we use um, um organic honey to reroot our I don't want to pull it out I'll pull this one out I don't want to pull it out okay um, um I'll just so you can see we cut off all of the dead leaves that's why it looks a little bare and we use organic honey to reroot the bottom of our stem, and it is cut at an angle. I don't. Uh, I'll pull it out just so you can see what I'm saying. Do you see the angle that it's cut at? That's the only way that the tree is going to survive. We laced it in honey, and we're going to put that back and allow it to reroot itself. Make sure that the leaves are not on top of each other so they're not fighting for sunlight but they are in a good position sorry okay the so one of these is used for like i said to rebreed mealworms this actually has vegetables planted into it this has vegetables planted into it and what we did, which was fun, from one of our trips from the Bronx Zoo, um, my daughter, not one, but my daughter received this. It's seeds with, with plants uh, with covered in paper. So you literally just wet it, stick it into the ground, or you can stick it into the ground and wet the soil, whichever one. I chose to wet it first and then stick it in. So it's a lot of these smaller ones that you see, except for this pink one, and, and it's distinctive why this is pink, because that, that lets us know this is a breeding container for food. So everything here was free and it is recyclable, which is, uh, we can recycle it, which is what's most important. I like Donka's Donuts, so I decided to save one of my latte, ice latte mm -hmm. containers for a plant, a plant holder. Um, this is from my daughter likes cake and things like that. So when we do our baking, we use the icing container and everything. Another thing that's important, we did not use soap to clean out these. We use hot water. I did it as a mommy. Do not let them use hot water to rinse with their hands because sometimes soaps have products in them that can kill the root. 
So don't, if you're going to reuse it, like a tomato container, a water bottle, a chocolate milk, do not wash the container with soap because then, like I said, you can possibly kill the root. We use warm water, hot water. I prefer, prefer that parents do this. Um, this is an old hair conditioner container. We use this for hair conditioner. And um, um, we had it lying around, so we rinsed it out with very warm water and we laced it. We've just literally cleaned up, you know, the white spot that was on online a few weeks ago is gone because we have cleaned out his, sorry, we have cleaned out the bottom of his cage. We take everything out, wipe it down, clean it up. We centerize the, let's get that out of it. We centerize the, um, um, fighting fish so that he has a move, room to move around in a circle. And if you notice, another thing that's important is the plants are not too close to one another. You know, he can he can get in between here, he can get out. Chameleon is not that big yet and he's in the process of beginning to shed, as you notice. Um, I've just recently took this down so I can give him room so he's not scraping while he's shedding. Um, um, you can help, he's a little upset. He's like, are you putting your hand behind me? What are you doing? He's upset. <laughs> He said, what are you doing? Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to bother you, bud. I'm sorry. It's just, we literally set, we had so much. Sometimes when you're in the moment and you're just hanging out with your kid, you forget to film. <laughs> so this was one of those moments because initially when you did see Bobo's c c enclosure, it was rather bare. All that was there were these two vines. Bobo, are you coming to me? What's happening, Bobo? Are you pissed off? I see black spots. Whenever I see the black spots, I tend to leave Bobo alone. But he could be coming to me. No. Okay, he's crouching. When he's inflating, see how he's inflaming, he's like, get out of my enclosure. So we're going to respect that. And we're going to get out of his enclosure because Bobo knows that I don't like to be bit. Even though a bite from a chameleon does not hurt, my daughter puts her hand right in there. And I have to constantly remind her because she's just five that, you know, when you see these pretty black and white colors, Bobo is pissed off. So don't antagonize him. Respect him. He's an he's a reptile, and he you know we have to respect his space. As you notice, I'm backing away, and he's starting to. Let's see. I just want you to see that he's shedding. He starts to begin to shed. He's really pissed off. His colors are bright. Um, as you can see, see how his leg is just coming on the vine. Like so I loosened a lot of these things. This is very loose. As you see. This is rather loose. It's not. It's not tight. It's not scraping him. And I, as you see, those doubled. I just wanted to make sure everything was really loose, so nothing is scraping against him. Um, towards the end there, that one is a, has a little bit of tension because I needed to hold up this vine to keep it nice and supported. And I put this here so he doesn't just have to walk on the. Okay. So he doesn't just have to walk on the black vine. Um, all of the water is conditioned, so the same water that is in here is the same water that is in here. So if a little bit drops on the fish, that's fine because everything has conditioner in it. Um, what else did we do today? Oh, his little blue light did not last long. Didn't last long at all. So we have to get another blue light. I did watch another chameleon owner's chit chat about the blue light it does run out rather quickly and i said to him well i've had my chameleon for perhaps a week now and our light is working here we are on week two and a half and the light is gone bonito so we are going to have to get another light i'm not sure if i'm going to go with the blue light again as it didn't even last a week and a half um which is why it's really important to watch these youtube videos get other people's opinion you don't have to follow the exact move but I wish I would have, when I saw that video, I wish I would have went out and gone and bought another light because little that I know days after watching his light went out. He looks so thin and he's been eating. He eats his crickets, he eats his mealworms. I've been cleaning up his poop. He's been pooping. When I went to rinse the the green top, it was smelled a little pee, pissy. So that was a good sign. I was looking for those signs to show that, okay, he's urinating, he's peeing, I'm sorry, he's pooing. Um, he's healthy. He's moving around quickly and not slow and lethargic. He's shedding. His colors are changing in and out. Um, what I did really didn't get a chance to capture on camera is when my daughter and I were setting up his enclosure, we did not remove him. We let him stay. And he did not 
in flame and colors at all. He didn't change colors at all. He was actually a very pale lime green. He didn't, and he wasn't hanging out too much in this tree. He was kind of on this side. It was almost like he was happy to see the greenery. He was happy to see the soil. Um, and we did not coax him with food. Once again, I hear a lot of uh, owners say that, you know, put food in your hand and he'll come to you. That's not a way to establish trust. That's a way to starve them and get them to eat the food out of your hand. And we don't like to do that. So, you know, here lately, when I put my hand in his enclosure, as you can notice, watch your colors. He, he's a little irritated right now. So this isn't a good time for an example. But earlier today, when my daughter and I were in his enclosure cleaning out, he was a pale green. He, he wasn't any black spots at all. He was just kind of relaxed and he was sitting on a brown um, um, vine, which also was an indication to me that he wasn't camouflaged and he wasn't upset and he was somewhat becoming familiar with us. Um, he's learned now that because this has a slight crack in it, that he can climb in this corner and try to escape. He's of sex. I put my hand there, as you can see, and try to escape. My daughter loves this. Her new word is escape from Nemo, Nemo 2. So uh, Dora says escape, so she likes that. <laughs> Sorry, so things are having a five-year-old. So anywho, once again, yeah, to piggyback on what a former chameleon owner said on his YouTube channel that blue light does not last. So if you have one and it's working, go out and buy another one. Just, just do it ahead of time because they last about two weeks and I don't keep any of my lights on more than 12 hours. This is another video in the evening. My daughter's sleep is 8.30 right now. And you know, his, his um, um, light is on, but I'm about to actually turn it off. The only reason that I have it on is because I just put the plants in there. He had a very late feeding tonight. I fed him at about 7.30, 8 o'clock. Um, um, and she's gonna get out of my bed too because I need to lay down and relax. <laughs> Um, um, so I just wanted him to see, like, see the greenery, see what was going on, and primarily to shoot a quick video before tomorrow comes, and you know he's he's up, up and about again, and I wanted to show how we really inducted the meaning of a greenhouse. Everything was free. Um, we're recreating the food. We're letting the food rebreed rebreed inside of the greenhouse. I mean, if if I had enough space, I would put a little cricket section where you let the crickets breathe in a little capsule, but I don't really have enough space and I want him to have room to walk around. Also, another thing I noticed about the chameleon that we have is he loves to climb down. For his first week here, he stayed up here. He just lived in this section. He wouldn't even come down for food. Now I've noticed because he knows that my daughter, right, because we just put these plants in, but he knows my daughter feeds him right here where you see on our previous videos, he had that white spot, which was from his, Maybe I can show his food again. His food and his repti calcium, his repti vitamins, and we do a stable diet of crickets and mealworms. He doesn't have any more crickets left, but this is our stable diet, crickets and mealworms. I've heard from some people that crickets are a stable diet. I've heard from some people that crickets are a snack. Not sure which one. but. You know, it's up to the individual what their chameleon likes and careful not to overfeed him Also, another thing I noticed that the mealworms like to do is they've gotten smart They do like to rise up to the light But they also hide underneath this green top and we went to clean this green top today There was about 15 mealworms underneath there now I do know that he is shedding and sometimes when they're shedding they're not eating as much because the first week we got him he wasn't shedding, he didn't shed for two days. He was just adjusting, I think. He was a little traumatized from being transported out of Petco into our home. We have a puppy, we've got a five-year-old, we have fish, that's about it. But it's a lot going on. Um, um, so I think that's why he didn't shed for the first two days. Now that he's comfortable, he's relaxed, he can recognize our face, he's beginning to become structured and shed and eat. But since I've noticed that the past two days that he's been shedding, he hasn't really been eating the worms as quickly as he was when we first got him. I'm not sure what kind of a feeding schedule he was at on at Petco. I know it was probably phenomenal because they were very informative and you know they didn't just grab him, they let the chameleon come to him. He had a bonding relationship with one of the members at Petco named George and George didn't struggle to get him out of the cage, which is why we haven't exactly held him. And I just wanna be clear about that. We are on week two and a half and we have not held him at all. We haven't even attempted to. We will go like this 
And like I said, keep a safe distance. This is our border for to respect his space. If he doesn't come, he doesn't come. Today, when we were cleaning his cage, he tried to climb out. So I did have to put my hand in and dwindle him back in. And he actually went to my hand, which scared me a little bit because, you know, we're not we're used to him shying away. And we, we, we're new owners, we're new reptile owners, period. And we're new to Bobo, the chameleon. So um, I, it's very clear to me that he has bonded with one of the staff members at Petco because of how easily he came to him. And now it's clear to me that he's learning that, you know, we like to keep the door open. I keep the door open sometimes and he can just climb out. I do keep my little cavadoo, he's a little cavadoodle. I keep him out of the room because he's intrigued, he's interested, and he's very jealous. He knows that we're spending a lot of time trying to bond with the chameleon. We feed him three times a day. Uh, I give him about eight mealworms at a time, three crickets at a time, because I don't want to overfeed him. Um, um, and yeah, so I just really want to get in a position where we can get a bigger enclosure and he can have his crickets rebreeding inside of his enclosure. He can have his mealworms rebreeding inside of his enclosure and just have them in a little capsule. Like when they're down into here, because he's a male, he doesn't do much digging into the soil. If he was a female, you would not be able to rebreed the mealworms inside of the enclosure because she'll dig them out so that she can lay eggs and um, um, she'll find them. But because he's a male, and which is a great start for people who are new reptile owners, especially if you've got a small kid that you're trying to introduce to reptiles, um, um, it's better to start off with a male so that you can do some kind of breeding system because we want to be economical. We want to make sure that you're not spending $1,000 on a chameleon, but you're not being cheap. If you're cheap, then the chameleon will become sick. He will die, basically. Just taking him to the vet in New York City is $100 just to walk in the door. And Petco made that very clear to me. And I know taking my little cabadoodle to the vet is about $65 just walking in the door. That doesn't include shots and things of that nature. Um, so it's important to understand that he's not a cheap pet. Need no pet is a cheap pet, to be quite, to be quite frankly honest. Um, but you don't have to break the bank and you can have him as a family pet and enjoy him without going broke. You can create a greenhouse without spending thousands of dollars. I do believe that he still needs another vine in here. I want to put another vine and I want to do one hanging, you know, so he can climb down and I want to put a little ladder coming up. But I also want to give the plants a time to grow Give them time to, you know, breathe, see if the, the four plants that we've replanted have will die off or will they survive. If our honey, re, our honey rooting, because we rooted, re-rooted and replanted our plants with honey. Like I said, we wrap them in honey and then put them into the soil. We want to see if our honey technique will work because we do know that it does work, but did we do it correctly? Um, so I want to give that time. So that's why, you, you know, there's a space, like I said, and I don't want to overcrowd him. When these little veggies come, I'm actually going to leave them in this small container because we don't, we want the veggies to bloom like flowers. So it'll be here, here, and here, but not overcrowd his space. You want a lot of greenery, but you still want him to, space to be able to hang around and move around. As these grow, we're going to adjust this vine you know adjust readjust these so that they don't damage the plant leaves as you can see right now the plant leaves are kind of finding the way in between the winery and nothing is tied up in the back you know so we can actually right now it seems like everything is to the front if you can notice tied to the sides in the front so as time goes by i'm going to rewrap this and give it some space to the back and if we have to take out the little pond then we'll take it out you know it's just for show right now my daughter likes it he has a space he can walk around as you can see there's a uh, even amount of space between each item but that will fill up as time goes along you know and one thing i like about my kid is she's not afraid to put her hand in the cage so i had to constantly remind him like i said before respect his space i uh, use this as a border um, um, so if you go past this without his permission and he's not comfortable, then we're making a mistake because then we're breaking our opportunity to really bond with him. Today, setting up his cage, the color he was, he is not that color today. He was a very, very pale green once again. As you can see, we can even see a mealworm hanging out in the tree there. Just hanging out. 
looks like he's hiding. And like I said, usually he would have ate this little guy by now. So I'm quite shocked. Let's see if he's alive. Give him a peck. Yep, see he's alive. So he's definitely shedding. When they shed, sometimes they don't want to eat as much. This was an issue that I had. You see how this one has a little tension and he's wrapping his body around it. Um, I did make sure that I put some lukewarm water on him today to help him with the shedding process. So I was just really concerned with anything scraping against his skin or hurting him or making him uncomfortable. So I'm actually gonna do something about that so that as that vine has a lot less tension. Um, he loves his little drip system. What I did notice this week, well not really this week, but this past couple of days, he has been drinking from the drip system. Literally, he's been drinking from the leaves. When we first got him, he used to drink from a standing still water cup. He would literally drink from it. It was insane. I've never seen that before, but, and everyone said it wouldn't happen, but our chameleon was doing it. And it, uh, once again, it's up to your pet, you know? Um, um, but now that I noticed that he's getting comfortable, He's letting us put our hands in there and change things around without becoming black and, and really bright colors. And you know, I'm teaching my daughter that it's a false ideology that chameleons change colors to camouflage. They change colors due to their mood. So, you know, it's very important that if you do get your child, one of you get your one, yourself a chameleon, know that he's not changing colors because he's hanging out in a green tree and he's changing colors because you're upsetting him or because he's relaxed or because he's happy like right now he's not so happy so we're going to keep this video at a, a limit that's why i'm talking very fast because once again it's up to the respect of the chameleon but i'm just so proud that my kid replanted these items for free <laughs> i just couldn't believe she did i want other people to know that you can do that you can replant for free. You can decorate your greenhouse for free. It doesn't have to cost you an arm and a leg. Do not, I repeat, do not, as you see he's changing colors, he's getting relaxed. Do not take anyone's plants and replant them without their permission. Don't do anything fancy like roses or, or anything of that nature. They need big palm leaves. These catch water. They're meant to catch water. That's why I, I, I got these. You, as you can see, I'm just going to zoom in right here. There's water sitting right here. In my finger there's water and the water is sitting and resting you see how this one is shaped like a, a cup that's holding water and he's gonna drink that water which is why it's important to another little example anything you see there's shiny that's actually water there so if that's a, a reason why you shouldn't do anything that's gonna hurt the chameleon I, like roses have thorns on them I know a girlfriend of mine she wanted to put roses in her chameleon Cage and I was like, they have thorns. Anything can damage their skin. Um, don't get anything that's poisonous. You know, just be careful. Oh, they, although they live in a rainforest and they're very intelligent reptiles, they are extremely intelligent. If a plant is poisonous, they won't climb on it and they won't drink from it. Um, if you put your hand too close, they can see. As you can notice, his, his little eye is actually looking at my hand. He's looking at this hand because it's moving around. Um, um, so. It's, and he, once again, see, he's starting to get a little, the little black spots. He's like, you're pissing me off. Um, um, so yeah, we're going to close this video. Important, remember to get simple plants that are cup-shaped, V-shaped, that hold water. It's not about decoration. It's about making sure your chameleon is comfortable. It's not about um, um, fun colors. They don't like the color red. You know, so d there's another false thing that I've been hearing Oh, you should get fun colors so your chameleon can change colors. No. They will camouflage sometimes. They do camouflage. So if you have some orange, which they don't like, um, um, in there, they will, you know, turn orange. If he's resting on one of these trees when they become a little bit stronger, he and he knows that. That's another thing. They won't climb out on something that's limp and that, that won't hold their body weight. They're very intelligent. Um, um so you know he knows that these plants are new he won't even climb on them he's been drinking from them but he won't climb on them um so don't don't put any any crazy colors in your chameleon's enclosure to try to get him to change colors he will change colors on his own today like i said he was a beautiful relaxed lime green and we're not talking about a shedding color because if he was too shedding he would be white so we're not confusing that either this is during the shedding process he was just relaxed with us um, like I said, I did, I did wet him a lot. As you can see, he's got a little drip on his, 
on his back that's just to help out with the shedding and you know to make him more comfortable once again as you can see his belly i'm gonna get in there so you can see that he's starting to shed because i know the light is on He's learning, he's learning. They are somewhat clumsy. Sometimes he slipped today and I was like, oh my God, he slipped. <laughs> and he was actually trying to grab onto this, but it was wet and he slipped down. And these are the vines because you can see carrying water. That's what we want, carrying water. Not fancy, crazy colors. And you know, I just want to reiterate again, they don't like the color red. So if you have the color, a bright red shirt on today, I've got on a gray shirt and he's still acting up. And I had on this gray shirt today, but I went in his enclosure. So that's maybe another reason why he let me go in there and he was calm about it. Um, um, but don't, don't make sure, be careful what you wear when you, when you enter his enclosure. See, he's sloppy, um, clumsy is what I mean. Be careful what you wear, what colors you wear, what colors you have on when you're approaching his enclosure. I'm um, going to go ahead and just turn this light off so we can drop his temperature. And right, let's check the temperature of his cage upside down you want to put on fahrenheit with the fahrenheit 